in the last video we talked about gravitational potential energy and we called it EP. And we said that gravitational potential energy was the same as work done to bring an object from point A, so point A to point B in a gravitational field, right? Because the gravitational field was working downwards. If we want to move an object from point A to point B, we have to put in energy, which we call work. We put in work to make sure we can actually go against gravity to bring that object to the new height. And that's why gravitation potential energy is more or less the same as the work done, which is this here, the work done to move an object from one point to the other point against gravity. Right? So another way of looking at that would be EP equals work. That's, so that means they're equal. And work would be in this case defined as mass times gravity, because this would be the um, force of weight. This would be weight, a force of weight, times height. Right? That's just the more or less the quick definition we can have of EP, and EP equals weight. The reason why I mention that is because dot point says explain that a change in gravitational potential energy is related to work done. So a change, why if there's a change in gravitational potential energy energy, um how do we how can we relate that to work? And what I'm gonna quickly show you is just two examples. I'm gonna use this formula, but remember I I'll go for the other formula again quickly in a second, but this is not the ideal one to use, but it's good enough to show that we need to have a, a change in gravitational potential energy is related to work done, but usually we would use a different one. So we've got two people here, two scenarios. We have him starting at point A, so he starts here, but he wants to get to point B. So what we can do, we can use the formula, work equals mass times gravity times height. What's his height? Well, we have to move it a distance to 5,000 kilometers, so 5,000 times a thousand would be his height that he wants to reach, right? But we're going to have to look at a change in gravitational potential energy. So we have to see how much do he have to begin with and how much does he have at the end, right? Um, so in this case, we would have our astronaut who weighs 150. So in this case, we have EP1 and we say 150. times gravity, and that in this case, if he's, if he's on Earth, which we just say he is, that would be 9.8, and then times the height, and he starts on the surface, right? And remember, this is the flaw of this equation. This means, in this case, we would have a height of zero, but usually we would have to obviously take into account the radius as well, so we have to take into account the whole distance, not just the surface distance. But let's say we use this equation, and it will give us a zero for this. So we take 150 times 9.8 times zero. So according to the definition to begin with, he has zero gravitational energy, right? Then he moves. So he's been he's been moved to his new position, and we're gonna have to calculate EP2. So this is mass stays the same. It hasn't changed. It's 150. Then his actual gravity would be still 9.8. Actually, it would be a bit different because he's moved a bit further apart. Well, we covered that in a different video, but it wouldn't be exactly 9.8. It might be a slight difference because he's 5,000 kilometers away, further away from the actual um, beginning. And then times the height, and that would be 5,000 times 1,000, right? Because 5,000 kilometers is from the surface to where he is now, but we have to times it by 1,000 to get it into meters. So we have 5,000 times a thousand, that's our um, height. So that would be 5,000, that would be times, and add three zeros. So if I put that into the calculator, I should get a value, 150 times nine, 150 times 9.8 times five million, And this is the amount of energy required. Right? So the amount of energy required to get the to get it there would be seven. You can use it. I mean, I'm not going to be exact, but you can see it's it's a big number, right? So it's going to be a huge number, and that number would be in joules. And then to get the actual difference between those two numbers, we would have EP two, so it's second potential energy minus first potential energy, 
and that will give us the difference between the two. In this case, because the difference he starts at zero, so no potential energy, and ends up with this big number. So obviously, the difference between the two would be this number. That's the difference between the two, right? But remember, we said that we don't usually use. We, you can actually, for this dot point, when you explain it, if, because all you have to do is explain. You don't have to um, do many, many calculations, but you can actually use the top formula because it's pretty easy to explain. But usually, you would be using this formula instead, right? Because remember, here it has the radius, the whole radius as well. So that means it starts from the center as opposed to from the surface. So we talked about this formula in the last video. So if you don't know where we got this from, it might be good to watch the last video. But we would use this instead. We would calculate um, EP1 using this formula. So EP1 from that formula. And then we would also calculate EP2 from that formula. Right? So we use that formula as opposed to the other formula. And then we would just do the whole difference change. So the change means we have to have the difference between the two. So usually you just be using a different kind of formula if you were to do the proper calculation um, to get the change between the two. But for the sake of this dot point, um, it's good if you know this formula. All that really means is that a change in gravitational potential energy is related to a change in work. And because change in so because EP and work is the same. And if you look at you know how much a energy is, is a person has at point A and point B, compare those two points, you can see that, that there would be a change in EP, which means there's also a change in work. So that's all that dot point really means. It's quite similar to the last one. But um, but yeah, remember that this is the quantum equation that we would usually use. But for the sake of this dot point, if you remember this one, and you can use that to explain how a change in work is related to a change in gra gravitational potential energy. Then you'd be also good to go. But hopefully that was useful.